As soon as Dr. Wilson entered the cave, he switched on his flashlight to illuminate the surroundings. Jagged boulders emerged before him, some stalagmites towering a meter high. Jacob muttered to Edward, As kids I'd only catch you at the cave mouth never went inside before, but it looks quite beautiful in here. Lucy eagerly crawled in, marveling. It's gorgeous. How could our village have such a stunning cave without me knowing? Jacob wrapped her head, scolding. You've never gone into the woods. How would you know? Even if you did, I forbid you from entering, understand? Lucy stroked her head resentfully. She scurried up ahead to chat with Dr. Wilson, asking. Are you all here for tourism, Uncle Wilson? But how did you know to visit such a hidden cave? Wilson laughed as he walked, replying, We're researching, not touring. Lucy continued, Research? But it's just rocks here. Nothing to study, right, Uncle? Wilson responded, Oh, there's much to research in rocks. Do you know the Hung Kings? Lucy immediately said, Who doesn't know the Hung Kings? We honor them on the 10th day of the third lunar month, and I'm the best in my history class, Uncle. Wilson praised, Excellent. Let me explain simply then. We're looking for ancient texts the Hung Kings carved into the stones, so we must examine the rocks. Lucy exclaimed in awe, Oh, I see. She chatted animatedly the whole way, forcing Wilson to constantly respond. Finally, at a cavern bend, the stench of bat guano grew overpowering. Everyone covered their noses. But Wilson suddenly cried out instead, Here it is! His flashlight beam directly illuminated a cave wall where bats clustered sleeping, inverted and oblivious. The bats coated the walls entirely black. Seeing Dr. Wilson's reaction, Lucy asked, what did you see, Uncle? Wilson questioned back. Don't you see the engraved letters over there on the wall? Lucy shook her head. Wilson explained. Right behind the bat flock, where three are huddled together. He abruptly halted, eyes widening as if noticing something. A fairly young woman stepped up, Amanda, Edward's girlfriend. She regarded Wilson and asked, What's wrong, Dr. Wilson? Did you find something? Wilson asked her, what do you make of those three bats clumped together? Amanda peered closely, then spoke. You're right. Three stone bats? How odd. But it's best not to disturb them. I noticed something abnormal about the bats here. Wilson asked. What abnormality? Amanda began explaining. These aren't ordinary bats. I suspect they're... A voice suddenly cut in firmly declaring, Vampire bats. Vampire bats? Everyone else blurted strangely in unison. Glancing back, they realized the assertion came from Dr. Doug, the team archaeologist. Dr. Doug strode up front, gesturing as he explained, These vampire bats are extremely bloodthirsty. They usually only inhabit the Americas. Their presence here must be for a very special reason. Dr. Wilson asked, so are they dangerous? Dr. Doug answered, Usually not, but some vampire bat species are aggressive. In large numbers they can bleed a man dry, so be cautious. Best not to wake them. Approaching the stone bats, Dr. Doug suddenly pressed one. The ground violently shook. Everyone panicked as a dark, narrow hole just wide enough for a man appeared. Roughly 40 centimeters across, its depth was unknown. Strangely, despite the intense tremors, the vampire bats seemed completely undisturbed, sleeping soundly on. Dr. Doug signaled for silence, then crawled into the inky hole himself. The rest gradually followed down the pitch-black shaft burrowing deep into the mountainside. Just entering the darkness, Dr. Wilson whispered excitedly, Good gracious, the fire letters. Immediately a scuttling sounded from outside, as if something was beginning to stir awake. Dr. Doug frantically shushed him, glaring at Dr. Wilson behind. They continued further until Dr. Doug suddenly seemed to slip down another black hole and vanish, signaling a new space. Emerging from the narrow passage, a cramped dark room appeared. Exactly a small stone chamber just a few square meters, 
with a two-meter ceiling to barely stand. Crowded all over were intricate symbols, clearly the fire letters Dr. Wilson had mentioned. Dr. Wilson lamented, documenting something this massive could take years. Deciphering every engraving will be an extremely lengthy process, Dr. Doug countered, yet it will uncover mysteries shrouding centuries of obscured history. The rest unanimously nodded. The tight, crowded chamber was now packed shoulder to shoulder. Dr. Wilson urged them to quickly photograph everything before bringing the images out to study. Suddenly, Lucy cried out, Ow, it hurts! Edward looked over to see her hand drenched in blood, face pale and terrified. He shouted, Look, Lucy, what happened? Jacob rushed to support her as she slumped against a wall and sank down. Lucy whispered, I just reached into a hole in the wall. It was like a blade came out and slashed my hand, it hurt so much. She then clutched her head, screaming in fright, mumbling incoherently. Edward urgently asked, What happened, Lucy? Tell me quickly. Lucy kept clutching her head, waving him away. Uncle Edward, I saw a naked woman walking around everyone, hair wild, throat bulging with some bellows like sack, so horrifying. She mumbled on then shouted strange ancient languages echoing around the cramped stone room. Though nothing was visible, everyone broke into uncomfortable sweats, scanning for the woman Lucy described but finding nothing. Dr. Wilson urged, All right, we've finished documenting. Let's quickly leave and set up camp outside before those bats awaken unpredictably. They unanimously agreed. Dr. Wilson crawled first back into the inky hole, the others following behind. Edward hoisted Lucy up, saying, Come on, outside I'll take you to the health clinic. Lucy shook her head. I can't go. That woman won't let me. She says I must take her place, calling me a wraith. Edward insisted. What exact words did she say? Recite them precisely. Lucy's face paled sickly. Staring into Edward's eyes, she suddenly blurted a stream of bizarre ancient tongues. But listening closely, it sounded vaguely like some odd local dialect completely incomprehensible to Edward. He frowned ponderously, wondering if she was delirious. But just then Lucy abruptly stood and slipped into the dark hole herself. Edward urged, Good, keep going outside. I'll take you to the village clinic. With Edward here earlier, Jacob had already gone ahead, waiting to receive Lucy for emergency care. She just needed to crawl out and he'd rush her for treatment. Lucy crawled on lethargically, but Edward failed to notice she was no longer herself. Her eyes now held an ineffable shrewdness, mumbling crazily as blood dripped from her mouth leaving a trail of bizarre ancient letters. Following behind, after a stretch Edward could no longer sense Lucy's presence, she crawled too quick, practically sprinting on all fours. Edward called, Slow down Lucy, don't overexert yourself. He scrambled faster trying to catch up but emerging outside found only Jacob standing there. Before Edward could even speak, Jacob asked sharply, Where is she? Why didn't you send her out first? She's seriously ill. How could you leave her behind? Edward cried in shock. You're joking again. She just crawled out ahead of me, didn't she? Jacob snapped. I've no time for jokes. Get back in and make sure she comes out. Quickly now. Edward crawled out pleading. I'm not lying. Suddenly full of abnormal vigor, she sped ahead out here. No way she could sneak past with us at both ends. Impossible. Unconvinced, Jacob shoved him aside and checked himself. But soon he also crawled out looking horrified. Brother Edward, I don't see her, she's vanished. But I definitely stood here watching everyone emerge one by one. No sign of her. Edward impatiently said, you must have mistakenly overlooked her for someone else. Let's get outside and search. Just then Edward glanced up at the cave wall and froze in shock, asking Jacob, Good Lord, where did all the roosting bats go? Jacob said, They were clearly still sleeping up there when I stood guard earlier. Edward concurred, And I heard nothing stir from here either. They were interrupted by terrified screams, faint pleading cries in the deep night. 
Jacob declared, hurry outside and check. Rushing out, Edward was horrified to find one or two bodies lying mutilated, throats torn with some appendage visibly squirming out. Faces blue, they were dead. Shadowy figures flitted in the darkness. More screams echoed through the terrifying woods. Suddenly a harmonica tune rang out amidst the shrieking. Edward exclaimed, It's Lucy! Jacob asked, How do you know? Edward explained, I gifted her that harmonica this morning. She was practicing this exact tune all afternoon trailing behind. Jacob glared accusingly. So you secretly allowed her to study music against me? After this I'll deal with you. He charged towards the sound, muttering, No wonder I kept hearing faint music earlier. Had I known I'd have killed her myself. Though barely audible, Edward paled hearing everything but stayed silent. Soon the harmonica stopped. Jacob froze by a bush, gazing at the brook. A nude girl sat singing eerily ancient words atop a boulder amidst the stream. Jacob faltered before this ghostly scene. Suddenly a bloodied hand stretched from the bush, weakly pleading for help. Looking closer, Jacob realized it was Dr. Doug, clutching a gory photo scrawled with text. By the time Edward reached Dr. Doug, he had already died. Jacob shakily held the photo of the cave markings, too horrified to speak. Edward snatched the picture and wiped off the blood. Flipping it over, he found a rough translation scrawled on the back from the ancient letters in the photo. A naked human-shaped wraith with a throat sack sings under the bright moonlit sky. Stay silent, don't disturb it. Wait for it to finish singing and vanish on its own before leaving. If discovered, flee swiftly and don't let it notice you. It will capture souls in its throat pouch. Bao Hao Wraith, translated from ancient Muong, Thai hieroglyphics. Edward's hands trembled as he read the words, then peered at the singing figure in the stream. Glancing up confirmed it was a moonlit night. Just one detail remained unknown. The throat pouch. Edward urgently pushed Jacob's head down behind the bush, just in time as the wraith glanced their way. Jacob moaned, trying to speak, but Edward clamped his mouth shut. Only when the wraith looked away did Edward release him. Gasping, Jacob asked, what are you doing? Edward whispered. Dr. Doug's warning says that thing is a wraith. Want it to catch you? Read this. He showed Jacob the photo's reverse. After reading, Jacob shivered speechless, asking, What do we do now? Edward replied, Wait for it to vanish on its own. Don't let it notice us. He scrutinized the figure on the boulder. It sang while scanning around eagerly occasionally glancing their way. Through foliage holes and dim moonlight, Edward shuddered seeing the undulating throat pouch on its neck. Its face was obscured by mist. Too terrified to keep watching, he bowed his head down. Suddenly a blood-curdling scream pierced the deep night. The singing wraith halted, eyes icy as it sought the source of disturbance, a ghoulish smile spreading. In a flash, the wraith vanished. Edward saw it reappear at the stream's end before a petrified man right before he collapsed dead like Dr. Doug. The wraith's throat pouch pulsated as it panted in satisfaction, face momentarily losing its blurriness before restoring. In that glimpse, Edward vaguely recognized its features. After the wraith disappeared, Edward and Jacob fled to the village. Jacob fretted about Lucy the whole way, but Lucy was fine, the first to emerge from the woods. When the other survivors reunited, Edward and Jacob arrived too. Furious, yet relieved for Lucy's safety, Jacob just silently glared at her. Only Amanda and Dr. Wilson survived the disastrous expedition. Edward learned after asking around that as he and Jacob stood confounded before the dark hole, the vampire bats suddenly awoke. Strangely, a clear ringing singing sound also rang out simultaneously, and the bats darted straight for their throats. Everyone panicked and scattered frantically. Amanda and Dr. Wilson fortunately recalled the way and escaped, but the rest weren't so lucky. 
The vampire bats had drained them all dry, or the wraith captured their souls, leaving empty shells. Seeing Edward, Amanda couldn't resist running up and hugging him right in front of Jacob. Despite his stress, Jacob was delighted seeing their public affection, happy that Edward had found love. Dr. Wilson also felt shocked, unaware of their relationship. He had intended to confess to Amanda after this, but had clearly missed his chance. Surviving such peril forged deep memories for Amanda, of who shielded her in the end, Edward, of course. This would cement his importance to her forever. After Edward asked some more questions, Dr. Wilson sighed dejectedly. So many deaths yet pathetically little documentation retrieved. See here, I only managed to take two photos from Dr. Doug. The rest are totally lost with the others. Edward suggested, then we should return to the woods tomorrow to find them and retrieve the bodies for burial, along with the remaining materials. Dr. Wilson shook his head anxiously. I dare not enter again. Look, it's nearly noon already. Round trip would waste an entire day with no vehicles. We'd only reach them at night, but entering at night risks encountering that wraith again. Edward nodded, considering their surroundings. It was true he and Jacob had traveled all night, barely exiting the woods by dawn. Preoccupied with Lucy, they hadn't noticed the lengthy commute. After this, Edward returned to the city. Dr. Wilson filed an incident report on the mass disappearance. Though yields were low, Jacob still received the full 10 million payment. Thrilled, he suddenly permitted Lucy to study music. She could hardly believe her ears. The very next day, she was rushed to the city to stay with Edward's family. Edward warmly welcomed her, arranging a private room at his cousin's home. Studying at the Arts Academy, Lucy became a famous singer across the city within years. Soon flush with cash, she bought her own house and cars, plus ample land back home for Jacob. Once the village's poorest, he now enjoyed prosperity thanks to his daughter. Success seemed a stroke of fortune for Jacob's family, a windfall granted by Providence. Yet Jacob and Edward were oblivious this was no blessing, but a nameless lurking curse. Leaving the printing factory after work, Edward suddenly saw a gaunt, haggard man waiting outside, Dr. Wilson. Approaching, the man rushed up asking, Edward, remember me? Edward was puzzled, unable to place him. The man patiently explained, you don't recognize me? It's Dr. Wilson, from two years ago. Edward slapped himself, shocked. You're Dr. Wilson? Impossible. Why so emaciated? Dr. Wilson sighed, taking his hand. Let's eat. I have something to tell you. He dragged Edward straight to a small pub, ordering boiled peanuts and two beers, sitting him down. Edward nodded and sat as Dr. Wilson silently drank his beer. Idly, Edward glanced around the pub, noticing the TV news describing a series of strange cases. In recent years, there have been suspicious deaths by cardiac arrest in the city. Authorities believe these were murders staged as natural, though the culprit remains unknown. Citizens should be vigilant at night and report anything suspicious on our hotline number. Absorbed in the report, Edward was interrupted by Dr. Wilson suddenly asking, Remember the ancient letters from that cave by your village? Edward nodded. Of course they caused so many deaths, impossible to forget. Dr. Wilson laughed bitterly. After that, I was jailed a year for negligence. My doctorate revoked. Edward sighed, pitting his reversal from Presti. It wasn't your fault, was it? Dr. Wilson shook his head. You don't know. I couldn't report the full truth. Hence this outcome. Surprised, Edward asked, Why not the truth? The truth, Dr. Wilson echoed. What if I said I saw a wraith that caused it all? Would they believe me? Edward understood. So you chose to lie and be jailed? Dr. Wilson tilted his head. Better than the insane asylum. Just a year, and after prison, I resumed researching those remaining photos. You know what? I discovered a secret. Intrigued, Edward asked, 
What secret? Dr. Wilson furtively glanced around before whispering. Back then, the wraith appeared among us. Shock and speechless before Edward could respond. Dr. Wilson pulled out the two photos laying them on the table. Beside them he placed tattered papers densely scrawled upon, pointing as he said, See for yourself, it took me a year to uncover this. Regrettably, we traveled with a wraith unknowingly. Hearing this, Edward shakily read the scribbled pages. Calm at first, soon utter shock overtook his mind. He shoved the papers away, denying, no, you're mistaken. You misinterpreted this. Dr. Wilson sneered. I know you understand me. Also don't believe I'm wrong. In fact, very much the opposite. You just can't accept the truth, right? Furious, Edward abruptly left. On TV, the news report continuously looped, urgently seeking information on the baffling murders by induced heart failure. Dr. Wilson downed his beer in one gulp, face flushed. He cackled at the bright red text highlighted on the tattered pages. A bow how wraith can take human form through exchange pacts, provided the person loves singing, thus enabling its existence among the living beyond spatial constraints. Its evil powers become limitless. Disgusted, he crumpled the pages and tossed them in the trash. Edward felt similarly jumbled. Glancing at the moonlit sky, he glimpsed a woman's silhouette down a nearby alley. Following, he realized it was Lucy. Recalling everything, he couldn't resist pursuing her. Lucy was dressed lavishly, warily scanning for anyone nearby before suddenly stripping nude, stashing her clothes in a corner. Now misty-faced, she peeled skin from her throat, revealing a pulsating pouch, the wraith's throat sack. Horrified witnessing this, Edward had denied Dr. Wilson's conjecture but now it was proven true. Due to Jacob's past objections, Lucy had bargained with the wraith back in the stone chamber, becoming a bow how wraith, a terrifying ancient spirit. Hearing Edward's shocked cry, Lucy immediately sensed him. Naked, she hissed. Who's there? Slowly approaching the source. A blood-curdling scream. Then darkness overwhelmed Edward as he collapsed, dead. The next day's news reported yet another anomalous cardiac arrest the brazen killer's axe escalated. And so ended Edward's encounter with the ancient evil lurking in the cave's darkness. Compelled by human desires, Lucy had unwittingly unleashed a nameless terror that consumed all it touched. Let Lucy's deadly bargain serve as a warning. True courage lies in resisting temptation's pull, no matter the form it takes. Strange creatures still creep in shadowy corners of this world. Heed the lessons learned at great cost, or risk joining the mournful ghosts, regretting their fatal mistakes. More chilling tales await those daring to peek behind the veil and glimpse the horrors on the other side. Will you turn away, or read on? <laughs>